This is Twit. Marquez Brownlee, Amy Webb. Here's one of the things you came up with. This is more dystopian. Everyone alive today is being scored. And we're not just talking about China. This is data mining. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I think probably a lot of the listeners to the show are aware of the data that are being mined and refined. And, um, you know, this is one of the tricky things about the future of technology. Um, the data on their own aren't really worth anything. Um, it's what we do with those data. And a lot of our automated systems and all of the cool AI that excites us um, requires quantification in some way. So the issue is uh, a lot of our systems don't work without scoring us. However, we are constantly being scored and there is very little transparency. Um, and so that will start leading us down different pathways. Um, some, you know, some people will start getting charged things, you know, char charged differently for things. Uh, they may get denied um, the ability to use things. It probably also means we're looking at regulation in the future, um, you know. But it's a good reminder that uh, tech on its own isn't good or bad necessarily, but we have to start really thinking through how we're using it all. Here's one uh, Marquez is going to enjoy. Synthetic media. <laughs> yeah, we've got a really, really good section this year. I'm super excited about it on the future of synthetic media. What and is synthetic, synthetic media? What is that? So, Actually, we're actually calling 2020 the synthetic decade because there's a lot of emerging trends in synthetic media content, but also synthetic biology and synthetic data sets and synthetic food and beverage. So when we're talking about content and media, that is um, content that's been generated using a uh, corpus of uh, data, whether that's vocal um, recordings or your faces or you know whatever it might be. So on the sort of um, maybe the easiest way to understand this is a deep fake. So a deep fake would be sort of the the, the negative bad side, as, as we've seen it so far, of synthetic media. But the real future that I'm kind of excited about is, you know, all kinds of synthetic character development. I mean, there's, there's plenty of problems, which I think everybody's like heard a lot about. All the cool stuff is, um, you know, modulating voices, modulating faces, having... Um, all the YouTube content that you're interested in, but generated for you more specifically. Um, How you know, long before Marquez, before you just can retire yeah, and let an artificial <laughs> Marquez do the show? Before he's a sin for about, about a decade. To... I mean, if we're being honest. I was going to say, there's, there's, a whole, there's a YouTube channel called Ryan's Toy Reviews, which is this little kid who's, I'm, you sh I'm sure you've heard of him, but he's he's... Very young, so it's like borderline, like strange that he's a YouTuber, but his parents have enabled him to have this whole empire where he takes toys out of the box. And he's made like eight million, eight million dollars last year. Yeah, an incredible success story. But the parents are very careful to not like force this job on this kid and make him have to participate and make the videos. So they've hired a team to make an animated version of him and a story time what? channel and these other things to make sure he doesn't what? constantly feel pressured to work. I'm curious if synthetic videos are not so far away where I don't have to make videos either. I just sit down, have an idea, type it in and it becomes a video. You said yeah. a decade away, but that sounds incredible. Um, I mean, so it depends on uh, fidelity, like what your requirements are for fidelity. But we are there's already systems in place. You know, if you guys are in the recording business, so um, you, you've probably recorded a show or a podcast, and you wish that your guest or somebody had said something a little differently. You can't really go back and edit them cleanly. Um, the idea here is using a, a generative adversarial network and some other technologies and tools um, to sort of go back and reprogram what that person um, uh, said. I'll give you a better example. So at South by this year, I was going to uh, show everybody this brand new project from Reuters, which is a uh, algorithmic um, synthesized journalist. So it's like a guy who can uh, use the structured data from Premier League football games and then like give a sports report, which I find super boring on so many levels. Oh, but the um, reason but, they do it with sports is it's such a structured right, right, uh, right, content. Right. They've had artificial sports right. te text so writers like for a long version. time, right? 
Right. So this is like a video version of a person in a convincing way who looks like a news anchor talking about that, which they've been doing in China for a little while. So They're it's not using uh, the synesthesia technology. To yeah. Do this. Now, now I went over, by the way, to the synesthesia booth at CES yeah. and I asked the salient question, is there a human that looks like this? And they said, oh, yeah, this is just a captured human. Right. But it doesn't have – so that's just what they're doing. My point is it doesn't have to be. So it could be totally generated. Completely synthetic. Wow. And But now here's where it gets interesting. So, like, what could you do to make me care about soccer, which I care basically nothing at all about? Um, <laughs> well, if that if This that is going to make you care less about <laughs> soccer. This is gonna. I, I would suddenly care a lot more. Really? So let's say that, let's say that he looked like Chris Evans or ah. let's say that he was Chris Evans – um, and let's say that Chris Evans was speaking with a slightly lower voice um, and and talking directly to me about whatever blah, blah, blah sports. Um, I would totally pay attention to that. Right. Yeah. And now if we take that out to the next level, what if that exact and this is what I was going to I actually built this and was going to show this at at South by um, what happens if synthetic Chris Evans talking to me about soccer wasn't actually talking to me about soccer, but rather about how to um, socially isolate and wash my hands right, and be a better right. citizen in the right. era of, of the virus? And better right? yet, and that's where he things would start to know your name. He would call you Amy. He would know. He would, and I would listen. You would. You intently. might even fall in love with synthetic Chris Evans. I'm, I might. Like uh, I would. I'm like Joaquin married, Phoenix definitely. fell in love with Scarlett Johansson and her, right? Well, that was disembodied, but it's, it's you know, this is not far off and it, it doesn't have to be dystopian. I mean, that's kind of the interesting thing. I believe we still have some agency in deciding what comes next, um, but it's on us to track what's happening so that we make those incremental decisions yeah. as we go rather than getting to the future and deciding, holy hell, I, I wish it didn't look like this. I wish we could go back now the other direction. Well, good news Westworld's on in about an hour and uh, cannot wait. Synthetic cannot. Chris Evans awaits. <laughs> 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 the truth is, and it's not widely known, but they've been doing this in motion pictures for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very frequently, the stars you see on screen are out digitally altered. Maybe their voice right. is a little lower, or right. maybe their skin's a little clearer, or they have a little less fat on their bodies. That's commonly done now in fact yeah. it's often written in the movie contracts yeah and and again like and before that it was photoshop in magazine covers and before that it right. was some super talented artist with an eraser and a pencil and some paint you know we've always been trying to alter reality in a way that reflects our values our hopes our dreams and whatever they may be better um we're just getting closer to doing that in an automated way and fairly soon in a way that is um where some of the cognitive functions are, are being done for us. Sure. Well, I mean, the trick was always, uh, it's easy to do it in a movie because it's post-production, and so you have all the time in the world to work on it. The trick is to do it in real time. <coughs> Excuse me, real time. Mm -hmm. Karsten and I go way back because he used to make my hair spin when I was a virtual character <laughs> on uh, MSNBC, and that was almost 20 years ago now. Mm. <coughs> and that was in real time and that was what you was unique about that because reboot had already been on which was you know a, a cgi cartoon but it took weeks and days and weeks and months to make those whereas yeah. i would sit across from soledad o'brien and talk to her as a virtual yeah. character but here's so one of the things that we've done in this year's uh trend <clears throat> well we always do this in our trend reports is we get real granular um so, so it's not enough to talk about deep fakes and sort of ambiguity there's a lot of ex like we explain what are what the different elements are because not every part of the synthetic media ecosystem is moving at the same rate. Um, there's, and there's a ton of trends in there and a ton of things to think about. And it's super interesting to think about the future of synthetic media alongside other trends like artificial intelligence and home automation and censorship, which unfortunately is a new topic this year, um, you know, in all kinds of other areas, too. So. A synthetic Marquez Brownlee. But he's perfect. Don't change a thing. <laughs>